So now the next step is to go ahead and assemble the pedal. We're going to go ahead and solder um, the components. Now you can see I have a pile of components here. And at the end of this, uh, this video, I'm going to give you a schematic and a list of parts and the sources for all the parts. But uh, this isn't going to be necessarily a tutorial on how to solder and how to assemble uh, you know, a point-to-point -point soldered circuit board. I assume that you've had some skills in that. But I will show you how I place my parts and I'm going to show you how I assembled um, the final result. So here I start with a piece of pad per hole uh, perforated board. Now you can get um, large sheets of these, that's what I usually do. And I use a pair of tin snips to cut this out. And you can see that I've notched it in a certain way. And there's a reason for that. If you take a look at the back side of our um, pedal enclosure, you'll see the hole placement based on the drilling that we did. I have a battery holder here that needs to fit down here. And then, of course, we have the power entry. So let's go ahead and just quickly assemble uh, a couple things uh, just to kind of get a feel for where things are placed. And this will give you an idea of why um, I went ahead and um, cut the perforated board the way that I did. So once I get this thing kind of uh, situated, you'll see what I mean. We'll get the power entry point here just, just to sit in there. We're going to put the uh, pedal switch on loosely again just to get an idea of how to uh, cut out the, uh, the perforated board so that you can see that you don't have any interference with other items. Of course, I'm having trouble with the thread. Here we go. All right, just, just again, not, not too tight, just to get it to go. You'll see now that there should be clearance between um, the bottom of the, uh, the pedal switch and uh, the placement of where the battery holder goes. You don't necessarily have to use one of these. I like these because they kind of uh, they allow the battery to kind of sit in there. We're going to glue that in there. Um, and it won't let the battery uh, flop around and rattle inside the enclosure. You can use a regular battery clip too. Um, it's really up to you. Uh, so, so that's where this goes. Um, now, this area here uh, where the potentiometers are is obviously where the circuit board is going to go. And as you can see, I've notched this out so that it can be placed in here and it gives us clearance around um, the power entry and it fits uh, right in front or on top of uh, the pedal switch and it's notched on the corners uh, for the supports so you know when you do this make sure that you do this first not after that way you can make sure that it fits in uh, properly and gives you the proper clearance now the pots are going to go up there so this isn't going to go all the way uh, to the top side if you will of this enclosure it's going to float in there and it's going to be wired to various places. The LED is going to go there as well. So um, again, pad per hole, not necessary, uh, but I like it because I feel that the components are more snugly soldered onto the board. And uh, the next step is to go ahead and solder the components here based on the schematic. And again, I'm going to give you a full schematic and I'm going to also give you uh, a parts list and source uh, list at the end of the video. Okay, so now we have the, uh, the circuit all set here. Uh, before we put it in the box, what I decided to do was just go ahead and give it a quick test to make sure that everything is working properly. And so right now, um, there is no bypass switch and um, the, uh, the battery eliminator part of it um, is not uh, incorporated in the wiring. So right now, strictly, we have an input and an output. The output right now is not connected to anything. Um, as you can see, the LED is not on. Um, and just to give it a run through, we want to make sure that we have our wiring correct. Right now I have my guitar plugged directly into the uh, amplifier. Um, and so just to make sure that we're getting a clean sound, we can tell that, you know, right now. So right now we have a nice clean sound um, with the guitar directly into the amplifier. So now we want to test the, uh, the board. 
forth. So we'll, we'll turn off the amp and we'll take our guitar and plug it directly into um, the uh, fuzz that we have here, the Bulldog Fuzz. As you can see, the LED did turn on when we plugged it in, which means that that wiring is correct. Uh, the pots are in some initial position. I think uh, I've got the sustain all the way up. Uh, the volume is kind of in between and the tone is in between as well. Uh, you'll notice though that the gain of this thing is pretty high and so I have this thing set uh, you know, previously to what you heard, um, it's going to be much louder. So we're going to have to turn this thing down uh, when we plug it in because it's going to be pretty loud. Uh, uh, so just be aware of that it does give you a lot of gain. So we plug that in now and we're going to turn this back on. You can hear it. settings here to make sure they're working correctly and turning down uh, the sustain a little bit on the, uh, on the board here. So you can see the distortion did go down. Now let's check the volume. Oops, that's the tone. This is the volume. There we go. So that does work good. Let's check the tone. bypass switch on and we'll be good to go. Now that the board has been tested we're ready to go ahead and mount it inside the box. And so what I've done so far is I've put uh, the potentiometers in, I've gone ahead and tightened them down, I've got the LED in there, I've got the foot switch and I've put um, of course the uh, input and output um, connectors in and I just want to kind of take a look at things uh, notice that I've labeled um, you know the sustained tone and volume pots so that they go in the right spot you can kind of see how things are wired in there um, there's a little bit extra wire there so that when we go ahead and mount and, and try to get everything in place we have clearances that you can see uh, are made and uh, we're going to go ahead and, and make sure that the battery uh, tray holds in uh, in its spot here. We're going to glue that down eventually. And so before we do any of that though, we want to make sure that um, our wires are in the proximities that we need them. Uh, the switch needs to be wired still. We haven't done that. Um, and of course everything's been tightened down uh, using just an adjustable wrench and maybe a, a pair of hand pliers. But I wanted you to take a look at this and see how, how things are mounted, how things are looking before we do the final uh, button up of the the uh, the enclosure and so uh, always kind of take a look at things and make sure that you have the clearances that you need before you you know charge ahead and start to put things together because you might get yourself in a pickle where you know something doesn't fit right maybe the battery um, is a little tight or maybe uh, when you put in uh, the quarter inch uh, connectors in here that they interfere with the switch and so these are the things that you need to clear up now before you get yourself too far into it and and uh, again, testing the, the board outside of the box is, I think, critical because if there's anything that needs to be fixed, you can get at it easily before you go ahead and wire it into uh, a more permanent arrangement. 
And so now that we've done all that, really all that's left is just to go ahead and do the final wiring and uh, the final assembly. And as you can see, what I have left here to do is to wire the switch, wire the, uh, the 9 volt external power connector in, and, uh, and really that's about it. And hopefully if, if, if everything goes well, we've done the testing ahead of time, and uh, the pedal should, should work as advertised.